Okay, folks, there's uh, this will be a quick video, quick hit video. There's a special petition going around uh, that I just wanted to give uh, some publicity to because I think it's a good petition. And I think if you are a STEM professional, I highly recommend you sign it. Uh, so let's cover that real quick. So the petition in question that I mentioned comes to us, um, I just, I found it because I follow Free Black Thought, which is an excellent group, um, excellent group, excellent Twitter account, excellent bunch of articles I get from them on Substack every so often. I appreciate it. Um, and they came out with this um, uh, earlier this evening, um, as of the time of this recording. Save math. We are concerned about the unintended consequences of recent well-intentioned approaches to reform math education, which aim to reduce achievement gaps by limiting the availability of advanced math courses to middle schoolers and high schoolers. Signed the petition. And it goes on a little bit here in the tweet. Uh, save math, reducing access to advanced mathematics and elevating trendy but shallow courses over foundational skills would cause lasting damage to STEM education in the country and ex exacerbate inequality by diminishing access to skills needed for social mobility. Sign the petition started by Jelani Nielsen, um, Adrian Mims, and others if you're a U.S.-based STEM professional, academic, educator, researcher, and practitioner. Um... As I have told you all many times on this channel, I am a climate scientist for a living, um, and climate science is extremely math heavy, um, actually, in particular, dealing with the climate models themselves, which have all sorts of equations uh, from calculus, um, algebra, differential equations, you name it, there's a whole ton of it in climate science, which is really important, so that's why, I'm, why I signed the petition. Here's the petition itself, and I will give you some more of my thoughts on why I uh, why I signed this particular petition also um, when I get finished here. We write open letter on K-12 mathematics. We write to express our alarm over recent trends in K-12 mathematics education in the United States. All of us have had have firsthand experience of the role that clear mathematical thinking has played in advancing information technology and American economic competitiveness. We also share the urgent concern that the benefits of a robust mathematical education and the career opportunities it opens up should be shared more widely between students of all backgrounds, regardless of race, gender, and economic status. We fully agree that mathematics education, quote, should be should not be a gatekeeper, but a launch pad. An agreement there. However, we are deeply concerned about the unintended consequences of recent well-intentioned approaches to reform mathematics education, particularly the California mathematics framework. Now, for those of you on this channel who've been around a bit, you know that I actually talked about the California mathematics framework on this channel a while back. Um, it was a video entitled, Where's the Math? Because I was actually reading the framework and found there was very, very little about basic understanding of math that was actually discussed as the goal of a mathematics education in the framework. Um, so that's one thing I would point out right away, is there was something missing. Such frameworks attempt to, uh, fr excuse me, let's try that again. Such frameworks aim to reduce achievement gaps by limiting the availability of advanced mathematical courses to middle schoolers and beginning high schoolers. While such reforms superficially seem successful at reducing disparities at the high school level, they merely kick the can to call, they're, they're merely kicking the can to college. While it is possible to succeed in STEM at college without taking advanced courses in high school, it is more challenging. College students who need to spend near their early years taking introductory math courses may require more time to graduate. They may need to give up other opportunities and are more likely to struggle academically. Such a reform would disadvantage K-12 public school students in the United States compared with their international and private school peers. It may lead to de facto privatization of advanced mathematics, K-12 education, and disproportionately harm students with fewer resources. Another deeply worrisome trend is devaluing essential mathematical tools such as calculus and algebra in favor of seemingly more modern data science. As STEM prof professionals and educators, we should be sympathetic to this approach, and yet we reject it wholeheartedly. The ability to gather and analyze massive amounts of data is indeed transforming our society. But data science, computer science, statistics, and artificial intelligence is built on the foundations of algebra, calculus, and logical thinking. While these mathematical fields are centuries old and sometimes more, they are arguably even more critical for today's grand challenges than in the Sputnik era. 
We call on national, state, and local governments to involve college-level STEM educators and STEM professionals in the design of K-12 mathematics and science education curriculum. Set the following as explicit goals and allocate resources to help school districts meet these criteria. Meet these goals, rather. One. And I apologize if I'm having sound issues again. I cannot figure out what the heck is wrong with my microphone. All students, regardless of background, have access to a math curriculum with precision and rigor that would enable them to pursue STEM degrees and careers if they so choose. Far too, far from being deliberately held back, all students should have the opportunity to be nurtured and challenged to fulfill their potential. This is not only for their own benefit, but also for society and the nation's economic competitiveness. Three, there cannot be a one-size-fits-all approach to K-12 mathematical education. Students should be offered multiple pathways and timelines to explore mathematics, but one of these pathways should be the option to obtain the fundamental preparation for college-level STEM, including algebra, calculus, and logical reasoning. Students should have the opportunity to take these classes at varying grade levels of middle school and high school when they are ready, so that they acquire the tools to explore other STEM options and can build their proficiency in a balanced pacing, avoiding irresponsible compression late in high school. Mathematical education is a challenging enterprise, and we have the utmost respect for our K-12 colleagues who are doing this hard work. In appreciation of the difficulty, we believe that changes to educational standards should be approached with care, using incremental experimentation, building on lessons learned from the, both the U.S. and abroad, and using credible measures of success. In contrast, initiatives like the California Mathematics Framework propose drastic changes based on scant and inconclusive evidence. Subjecting the children of our largest state to such an experiment is the height of irresponsibility. Finally, K-12 math curriculum development cannot be disconnected from one of its most important end goals, preparing students for success in college-level STEM education and a STEM career. As educators in public and private institutions and working professionals in the technology industry, we have a first-hand understanding of the skills needed for this goal. While the U.S. K-12 system has much to improve, the current trends will instead take us further back. Reducing access to advanced mathematics and elevating trendy but shallow courses over foundational skills would cause lasting damage to STEM education in the country and exacerbate inequality by diminishing access to the skills needed for social mobility. And that's when we get down here into the signatories, because that's the letter itself. The signatories at this moment, as of this recording on December 6th, there are 746 signatories here. Um, and from all over the place. So you can get machine learning, computer science, professor of mathematics, mathematics and physics, mathematics, PhD student, professor retired, Yuan Tsai University, and it goes all the way down here. Um, I'm not going to go all the way down, but this list, but there's a lot of people who have jumped in and signed this and good on them for doing it. I did sign actually also in my professional capacity, not in my capacity as a YouTuber, <laughs> as somebody running their mouth on the internet. Um, as I said, I'm a climate scientist. Um, math is remarkably important. Um, statistics, computer science, data science, huge amounts of math, algebra, calculus, differential equations, the whole works, go into making climate science what it is. If you think about the projections of climate change, all of that created with climate models, there is a tremendous amount of math behind that. And one of the reasons that I get so concerned with the way, with, what, what's, with what's happening as math is being taught now it's one of the reasons I went after the the California math framework myself. Um, not went after it, but I just seriously asked, you know, where the heck is the math in the math framework? Um, one of the reasons I went after it is because the lack of actually teaching math, of letting students who are brilliant, giving them the opportunity to fly higher, to be challenged, to, to hone their skills at the pace that they are clearly able to do. And, you know, meeting the needs of other students who are, you know, just need a little more time and want to explore math on their own thing. That's, that's good. No, I agree with that. Do it. You know, not everybody, not every gets, everybody gets the same proficiency at math. Not everybody will be, 
you know, the high, the, the, the doing of algebra and calculus and what have you, but getting rid of those advanced placement courses and relying on college to teach calculus and all the like, it does really hold students back from doing the best that they can in their college career if they're not amply prepared to get into that kind of level of math if they want to go into a STEM career. Um, there And the reason it bothers me with respect to my own field, um, there's things now, if you, you can look them up, and I, I'm probably going to end up doing a few videos on them, things like the National Climate Assessment, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change Assessment Reports, all those different kinds of things. The science behind those reports <laughs> includes a huge amount of math from the modeling side of things that gets incorporated into the models. These are physical, physical science equations that are built with with uh, calculus and differential equations and what have you that are thus incorporated into models. There's a lot of other things that go in there too, but that is the basics, the basic part of it, the basics. Um, well, there's certainly a lot more in the climate models, but all of it has a lot to do with mathematics. And consider that, whether you agree with some of the apocalyptic kind of rhetoric or not, I certainly don't agree with the apocalyptic rhetoric in my field. Um, in climate science, that is. But even if you, whether you do or you don't, consider that all of those projections, are so much, so much so that are being developed for different policies, being developed and used to help us do research on the climate, to help us come up with mitigation policy, and increasingly being used for developing adaptation plans with respect to climate, to looking at local effects of climate change. Um, and the like, all of that depends so much on having a good proficiency of math, <laughs> of math, of algebra, of calculus, of differential equations, of the whole works in there. You have to be able to understand it. You have to be proficient in it. You cannot just wing it. Um, I know students who have tried and it has not usually ended very well, you know? Um, and so th when I think about that with respect to my field, my field will my field will fall apart if students if we're not getting in good students who are very proficient in math. Um, and that's and that's my biggest concern with math education is what will happen to my field of climate science if there's not good students who are capable and proficient in math and the way these mathematics frameworks work that's not going to help students with what could what some have argued rightly or wrongly what some have argued is the most pressing problem of our time is climate change how are you going to have students who are capable of studying that helping the rest of society with it if they can't do math that's the reason i am all for Signing this is why the, that's why I sign this is I want students I want to pass on to those passionate students proficient and brilliant in science and I want them to have every possible opportunity to be amazing to be amazingly proficient in science I want them to have that I want that amazingly proficient opportunity why because everything I do in climate science depends on it. The future of climate science and everything that it is depends upon having students who are proficient in math, who have an opportunity to go and be advanced, to be amazing, to do, to be, to exercise their brilliance in, in math. Um, and it also depends upon other, other students just working along in math at their own pace. In a lot of ways, we gotta, we gotta develop an understanding of each other. So students having even just a basic Proficiency of math is ultimately important from the standpoint of myself and others trying to communicate what the science says. So all of that is tremendously important. And that's why I am all for and I signed this petition. So if you're if you're a STEM professional, you're self happening to be watching this, please, I encourage you to go look at this petition to go sign it. Um, because... Th these folks are right. I am so glad a bunch of so many folks have signed it already. Um, we need good science. I don't necessarily agree that having some private schools is bad. Uh, de facto privatization, I think, might be bad. But um, I'm all for homeschooling. I'm all for public school. Uh, well, I'm more for homeschooling right now than anything because I'm not so great that I'm not so sure public schools are all that great to begin with. 
But if they're going to be improved, you got to do better than this California mathematics framework <laughs> myself. But that's a whole other conversation. This, um, this, um, this, this petition, I think is fantastic. And I hope folks go sign it. Um, so let me know your thoughts. If you like this video, hit the like button on the way out the door, comment on the video, share the video, subscribe to the video, all that, uh, subscribe to the video, subscribe to the channel, all that good jazz. Um, until next time. Oh, don't forget locals. Come join us over on locals. I'm going to be doing more on locals next year with my supporters and they will be for supporters only on locals. So you got to be a supporter. Anyway, um, I hope you, uh, have a good night folks. And until next time I'm Adrian. I hope you stay curious, my friends.